What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Silent Hill 3. Last time, we got a pretty, pretty big reveal. Heather is the daughter of Harry from Silent Hill 1, who is now dead. And Heather is the reincarnation of Alessa, which explains why the cult wants her. Claudia wants to pick up where Dahlia left off 17 years ago and impregnate Heather with their god. So if we come in here and we look at this doll first, that text is going to change later. Right now, Heather's just reminiscing, but if we read this letter... This day has finally come. That's right, the day when you and I will meet. I was always thinking of you, here in this gloomy cell. I never even knew your name, or face until today. But now I know. I know you're the one I've been waiting for. And haven't you been waiting for me, too? That's why you came to rescue me. Oh, how I love you, Heather. I want to give you my prized doll I made to commemorate our meeting, the start of this everlasting love. I can already see your smiling face. Stanley Coleman. Stanley Coleman, kind of a creepy guy. Not the last we're going to be hearing from Stanley. And now Heather says it's disgusting and she won't touch it with a ten-foot pole. So we are back in Brookhaven Hospital. The layout might look very familiar to you if you played Silent Hill 2 because in fact it is the same layout as in Silent Hill 2. The nurses are even back. So over here, I believe this is the uh, the doctor's lounge. We'll peek in the fridge. Food only, do not store drugs. I think that's kind of an odd reference because I think that's supposed to be referencing uh, Michael Kaufman's drug ring from Silent Hill 1. But he was running that out of Alcamilla Hospital. Brookhaven Hospital is the hospital you visit in Silent Hill 2. Let's see, we have some medical records. Remember, Vincent told Douglas to go after Leonard. And Leonard's in room S12... Audiovisual hallucinations, mental instability, obsessive, mild schizophrenia. Will continue observation, basically calm and cooperative, with a strong sense of justice. However, according to reports, becomes very violent when overexcited. And the other one is for this creepy Stanley Coleman guy. Yeah. Room S7. Usually passive and cowardly, also egotistical. Sometimes shows and acts on obsessive attachment to a particular woman. This is caused violent incidents. Use caution. Can't, can't really not fit there? Do I have to go all the way back around? So, Stanley is a person who tends to obsess over women, and that obsession can cause some violent outbursts. Ooh. Apparently the nurses are doing a real good job locking this hallway off, so... I'm gonna go the other way around. Actually, no, it's not that one I'm supposed to be in anyway. Yeah, it's in fact over here. You might remember that these are the double doors to the patient wing. We don't have much of a good reason to be coming here just yet. This room, ooh, that's a trap room. I think there might be an ample in there, but I don't need it, and I don't really feel like pulling the shotgun out to fight three nurses in a cramped room. The nurses, as usual, are pretty dangerous enemies in Silent Hill 3, as they were in Silent Hill 2. Okay, so there are a lot of things stuck to the wall, in particular this set of shiny, shiny, jingly, jangly keys. But we can't quite get to them yet. And we have another one of S Coleman's dolls and another letter from him. The organization has me. They have me shut up here. They mean to break my will, to make me forget about all that. But I'll stay sane even if they throw me in here with lunatics. How about if I stick this to the wall? That would be worthless. You can peel it off, can't you? With that junk those nasty wenches won't stop using? If a thing has no meaning, there's no reason for it to exist at all. Just as you exist for me. But why haven't you taken my doll with you? Oh, my gift must have embarrassed you. How cute you are, Heather. Once again, signed Stanley Coleman. So... That makes this all the more creepy, because it seems as though Stanley is moving around in real time. 
We didn't take his gift back in, back in the lounge, his doll. So he moved it over to uh, room four in the patient wing on the first floor. That letter also had another important function, aside from just the character building part. It was also telling us that the nurses in the hospital use some something nasty, something that uh, Coleman didn't like, and that it could be used to dissolve the adhesive on the wall. And up here we have Stanley's moved the doll again, and he's left us another note. You may not yet have realized your own true feelings, but you sense them unconsciously. Your brain noticed. And so you're trying to get closer to me. That's a virtue, the path to paradise. If the door's locked, open it. Use the password for the prison gates. Doctor, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, that quack has it posted. He should be here, too. I mean, four numbers would have been good enough, but he kept on going. Isn't it a shame I'm not there? Aren't you irritated? I long for you, but you're so cruel. Still, I want you, Heather. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. So, it's also not much of a hint, but if we come over here to the board, we get a really dumb puzzle. Pure eyes, blue like a glassy bead, you are always looking at me and I am always looking at you. Uh, ah, you're too meek, beautiful, unspoiled, thus I'm so sad. I suffer, and so happy, it hurts. I want to hurt you and destroy myself, what you would think if you knew how I felt. Would you simply smile, not saying a word? Even curses from your mouth would be as beautiful as pearls. I place my left hand on your face as though we were to kiss. Then I suddenly shove my thumb deep into your eye socket, abruptly, decisively like a drilling a hole. And what would it feel like? Like jelly? Trembling with ecstasy, I obscenely mix it around and around. I must taste the warmth of your blood. How would you scream? Would you shriek, it hurts, it hurts, as cinnabar red tears stream from your crushed eye? You can't know the maddening hunger I felt in the midst of our kisses, so many of them I've lost count. As though drinking in your cries, I bring my hopes to fruition, biting your tongue, shredding it, biting at your lips as if tasting your lipstick. Oh, what euphoric heights I would reach, having my desires fulfilled like a greedy, gluttonous cur. I long, too, for your cherry-tinted cheeks, tasty enough to bewitch my tongue. I would surely be healed, and would cry like a child. And how is your tender ear? It brushes against my cheek. I want it to creep up to my lips so I can sink my teeth into its flesh. Your left ear, always hearing words whispered sweet as pie. I wanted to hear my true feelings. I never lied. No, but I did have my secrets. Ah, but what, what must you think of me? Do you hate me? Are you afraid? As though inviting you to the agony at the play's end, if you wish you could destroy me, I wouldn't care. As you wish, you may destroy me. I wouldn't care. Okay, so this puzzle is really obtuse because it wants you to think of the keypad here as a face, and since you are facing it, the parts on the face are mirrored. So the one is someone's right eye, and the three is someone's left eye, and then it goes down, four and six are the left and right ears, seven and nine are the cheeks, eight is the mouth. So the first really important part of that poem is when Stanley mentions going and gouging someone's right eye, and the blood flows down to their right ear, which anatomically makes no sense, but the right ear is four on the keypad. Then he mentions the mouth and biting a tongue, so the mouth is eight. Then he starts talking about a cheek, but he doesn't say which one, so you read on and he talks about whispering words into someone's left ear. So you're supposed to assume he goes up to the left ear from the left cheek. The left cheek is nine and the left ear is six, so the code was 4896. Unlike the Shakespeare puzzle, I think that one is just fucking stupid, but we will move on to this medical record for the dead guy. Background unknown, name and age unknown, not admitted patient, found in poor mental state on hospital grounds and temporarily installed in room M4 at chief's discretion. Died late tonight from blood loss due to severed carotid artery, was grasping own kitchen knife in right hand. Assume this was cause of neck wound. 
possible suicide, but wound angle suspicious. Sent to second floor treatment room for further investigation. Have received no proof or corroboration of event from pe- uh, patient residing in same room. Have not notified police. However, for future necessity, leave victim's bed and effects intact in room M4. Okay, so his carotid artery was slashed. The doctor, the coroner, was uh, suspicious of the angle of the womb. He suspects foul play. But the person with whom this guy was sharing a room would uh, would not confirm what happened to the patient. So his effects are being kept in room M4, and we'll discover more about this guy and what might have happened to him here. So we have a briefcase. The alarm goes off when you get too close to it. And we have uh, Dahl and another note from Stanley. There was a tattooed guy, that rumpled bed. Not anymore, though. That alarm clock and filthy bag are his. Ah, but don't misunderstand. I haven't done a thing. I didn't hate him, though he was a liar. Shall I write something on my o- of my own on my chest since I can't cut it open to show you my heart? I love Heather. No, something a bit more forceful. I love Heather isn't enough for what I feel. Oh, what tender emotion this image brings. So Stanley was this guy's roommate, and he apparently killed him. This puzzle is pretty interesting. Let's see what time is it. It's 6, uh, the 21 it looks like. So 621 plus 12 should make it 1821. That's going to be the code for this briefcase, eight, uh, 1821. And I'll explain why that is. Um, on easy, the code for the briefcase here is just printed on the clock at plain as day. On normal, you just have to read the time, so if it's 11.30, the code is 1130. If it's 5.30, you put a zero in front of it, so it would be 0530. On hard, it's still just as easy as it is on normal, except there's just one extra step. You read the time and then convert it to 24-hour format by adding 12. So in this case, it was 621 on the clock. You add 12, that makes it 1821. And we are going to take what we got from that case and head out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not mean for that to happen. Okay, now we're going to head back to the elevator. And I believe all of the buttons except for one are broken. Three will become available later on, but that's not really relevant right now. So next step is we are going to go ahead and unlock, uh, nope, first we need the key, um, first we are going to head back to the room where we found all that stuff stuck to the wall, and we are going to pick the key up so that we can unlock the stairwell, yeah, C4, and... We will use the nail polish remover. Oh, wait, wrong menu. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I forget to head to the locker room on the second floor to get the perfume and the nail polish remover? Yeah, I thought something was missing. I. Yeah, I had that feeling. The feeling like when you forget your car keys or something. The feeling that I don't get because I don't drive. <laughs> uh, car keys, house key, whatever. Anyway, I'll make a real quick detour back up to the second floor because I totally forgot to go up there. So, be back in just a moment. So, let's see. Let's take the elevator up to the second floor. It's, I think, the locker room. I. What else did I do when I came up here that I completely forgot about this step? All right. Okay, no big deal. Still not as bad as the the screw up that had me forgetting where the map was in the hilltop center. <laughs> oh man. All right. Oh, it's right down this hall on the left at the end. 
Yeah, I definitely did not come in here before. <laughs> I thought I might have just come in here, popped in, and then popped right around, but... Alright, now we have the nail polish remover and the perfume. The perfume is not going to be... Its uses aren't immediately obvious, but... The nail polish remover, we already know what we're going to be using that for. That was uh, what Stanley alluded to when he said that you could use that gross stuff that the nurses put on to remove the adhesive. It's nail polish remover. So now we are going to go get that key that was stuck to the wall on C4. Or in C4, I should say. And the key that is stuck in that room is the key to the stairwell. And pass these nurses again. I bet they're getting sick of seeing me. I don't even stop to give them the time of day. I love the way this room looks. Silent Hill 3, 2, 3, and 4. Honestly, three of the best looking games on uh, the PlayStation 2. Looking even better on the PC, I should say. Okay, now we actually have the key this time. Last time we'll be seeing these two particular nurses, and yeah. A farewell swing of the pipe. Oh. These are the stairs. Okay, so first we are going to head all the way down to the basement floor. We were on the first floor. And on the ground we see some bullets. Bullets for a new gun. Submachine gun bullets, in fact. The wheelchair wheel is slowly, slowly coming to a halt. It's almost like someone was here recently. In fact, look at all those bullet holes. And we pick up a submachine gun. I love that all you need is this imagery to tell the whole tale of something or someone attacking whoever that was in the wheelchair, his desperate attempt to escape, reaching the end of the hall, finding a dead end, maybe trying to pry his way into the elevator, and just desperately shooting up the place in an attempt to kill who or whatever was coming after him. All of that told in such simple images. Five, two, nine, eight. That's important to remember because every time you come in here, that is randomized. So you take a picture back there with the gentleman's camera, the gentleman who Stanley Coleman killed. Could it possibly have been Stanley who killed the guy in the wheelchair? Hmm, don't know. Ooh. Now we're going to make our way up to the roof, where we have another note from Stanley. Stanley's uh, quite, quite the prolific writer. I also like the rooftop. It makes me want to fly. You too? Not quite as long and poetic as the others. We have a couple skinny looking closers up here. Maybe it's just because of the fog. This scene should look very familiar because this is the rooftop where James was thrown from in Silent Hill 2. In fact, uh, there's a reference to Silent Hill 2 in here uh, if you have a Silent Hill 2 save file in your memory card, much like uh, all the other ones. And it's Heather, I think uh, the exact spot where Pyramid Head throws you off the roof in the second game, she comments about it, it doesn't look... The, I think she said something about the fence not looking very unstable. Anyway, though, that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.